Hello everyone. So uh, I just decided that I would like to just explain the ordinary share capital note and the retained income note to you again, just to go over everything so that you are sure that you understand. Because it's new work in grade 12, you can be sure that they will test it in the June exams and definitely at the end of the year as well. So go through it slowly, maybe go through it twice and make notes and I hope you understand everything I try to explain it very slowly. Enjoy. Right, so let's get started. <clears throat> I've got a trial ban balance over here and I've only given us the information that we will need for the specific um, entries that we're looking at. Ordinary share capital, retained income, very important at the beginning of the year and then I don't know what my dividends on ordinary shares are. If we read the first adjustment or first transaction, it says Vega Limited has an authorized share capital of 1.25 million shares. They initially issued 500,000 shares at a price of one rand each. And then at the start of this financial year, they issued 300,000 more shares at one rand 80. And this has already been recorded which means the 300 and the 500 are in there. On the 1st of June, the directors decided to buy back 50,000 shares from Ada's granted shareholder and they paid 2 Rand per share. They give me the net profit before tax, the correct tax amount for the year. They tell me a final dividend has been declared on the last day of the year and on the 31st of December, which is more or less halfway during the year, the uh, interim dividend has been paid. We are going to do the ordinary share capital note and the retained income note. Okay, now to start with the ord um, ordinary share capital note, I've got two headings, a heading for authorized and a heading called issued. Under authorized, I'm just going to enter the 1.25 million shares that was um, that's authorized to be issued by the company. So it's no amounts, no random amounts, nothing. I'm just going to write the 1.250 million ordinary shares. That's it, nothing else. So that's just telling me that is what I can work with. Then you'll see I've got three columns over here. In this column, I'm going to work with the number of shares. Over here, I need to do some writing. And over there, I'm going to work with the rand amount. So now, it will always go beginning, issued, buyback, end. Okay. If the buyback happened before the issue, then we'll just swap those two around, but that's normally how it goes. So now if we go back over here, it says there initially 500,000 shares were issued at a price of one rand each. So if I go over there at the beginning, I had 500,000 shares and the rand amount, at, if it's at one rand each, will be 500,000 shares. And now, unfortunately, we need to do some writing over here. And the writing will be ordinary shares at the beginning of the year. Okay, I'm going to write it in just now. Then we issued 300,000 shares at 1 rand 80. So I need to enter that as well. So issued 300,000 shares at 1 rand 80 will give me 540,000 rand. Right, so there I've got it. It's very important to write the 1 rand 80 over there because you actually get marks for it. Then if we go over here to the next transaction, it says that on the 1st of June, the directors decided to buy back 50,000 shares from a disgruntled shareholder and the buyback price was 2 rand a share and this hasn't been recorded. So what I can go and do if I'm looking at that over there, I know I bought back 50,000 shares. 
but the rest I don't know. I need to go and work out the average price because I'm going to write your ordinary shares bought back at and then I need the average price filled in over there because those two bulk group of shares were issued at different prices. So in order to go and work out everything, I make three little headings for myself. The average, the paid, and my loss. So the average will be the rand amount, the total rand amount, divided by the total number of shares before the buyback. So that will be one million and forty thousand divided by eight hundred thousand and that will give me one rand thirty. I paid two rand for a share. So under the paid I know it's two rand. The difference between what I paid and what the shares are actually worth will be my loss. And now just to make it easier, I know I bought back 50,000. So I'm going to multiply with 50,000 next to each of them because I just, I need the, not just the amount per share, but I also need the total. So over there it is 65,000 Rand. Over here, it will be a hundred. And then over here, 35,000 Rand. Okay. So now, the, let me just get another color. The average will always be entered in the ordinary share capital note. The paid will always go to bank. And then the loss part will always go to the retained income note. Okay, so now I'm going to use that amount. That amount will go to my ordinary share capital note in a bracket 65,000 Rand. Okay, so you'll see I wrote in there that it's bought back and it's very important to write there the 1 Rand 30. So now I just go and I say 800 minus 50 will give me 750,000 and over there it gives me 975,000 Rand and then I just end off saying ordinary shares at end of year and that is how you do a share capital note. Now we are going to look at retained income. So retained income is really straightforward. We are going to start with a balance at the beginning of the year. I'll normally find that in my trial balance 145,000 Rand. So I'm going to enter it over there. 145,000 Rand. Then I need the net profit after tax. So if I go and look at the information that they gave me, there's the net profit before tax and there's my income tax. So the difference between the two will give me net profit after tax. So I first need to go and show in a bracket the 750 minus the 210,000 in order to make sure that I get all my marks and that will give me net profit after tax of 540,000 Rand. Then I've got a blank line over here. That is the entry where I'm going to make my buyback entry. So I'm going to write there shares bought buyback of shares and again now it's very important I'm going to write the loss amount per share and then the total amount will go there in a bracket. 35,000 Rand. Okay, so I've made the entry and again I've underlined over there it's very important that you write the loss amount per share because you will get marks for it. Now we're going to our dividends. 
So sometimes they give us the interim dividend and that's why I wrote it over there in my trial balance. That entry dividends on ordinary shares might be the last entry on your trial balance. In our case, we have to work it out. So we need to go to the last entry over here. It says that on the 31st of December, interim dividends of 25 cents per share was paid. So now I need a timeline. So there's my timeline. I issued the 300,000 shares here at the beginning of the year. Then over there, I paid my interim dividend and only there on the 1st of June did I buy back shares. So in order to work out my dividends paid, I need to work with 800,000 shares and they said the dividend is 25 cents per share. So then the total amount will be 200,000 rand. Okay. Then for the final dividend, that happened on the last day of the year. So now I need to take out the buyback. I bought back 50,000 shares. So I need to work with 200 and uh, 750,000 shares, the 800 minus the 50 that I bought back. So 750 times 0.25 will give me 187,500. And then I just add the two together, then I get 387,500. And it's very important to put it in a bracket. And then all I do is I literally take the opening balance, I add the net profit after tax, I subtract the 35,000, which was the buyback, and I subtract the dividends. And then I get an answer, which is the balance for retained income at the end of my year. Then just to take note, which is very important, that this amount for the final dividend will also be entered in note 9, the creditor's note, when we do the balance sheet. Just take note of that. Don't forget, you're literally going to copy that amount whenever you do note 9 at the bottom. Then, the income tax amount over there must be used and compared with whatever taxes you've paid already because the difference might also have to go to note 9 if we paid less than we should have. I really hope this all helps and that you do understand a bit more and that it helps you with activities that you need to do. Good.